What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 166 and we start today's episode off with a game against West Ham here at Upton Park in the FA Cup. Now of course in the FA Cup I usually play quite a weak side so we did make quite a few, uh, quite a few changes for today's game but uh, I did have quite a few first team regulars out there as well. A bit of a mix between backup side and first team side because to be honest I really want to do a treble this year. You know if this is going to be our last season in the career mode I want to go out with a bang. I want a treble. I want the FA Cup, I want the Barclays Premier League and I want the Champions League. It's going to be really hard to do but we can't take any competition for granted. So we take on West Ham with a relatively strong side and the first chance the game would fall in the 15th minute here as Klein goes down the right hand side, plays a 1-2 with Bale, Klein crosses the ball in, finds Daniel Sturridge and we take the lead. Uh, so a fantastic start here with just over a quarter of an hour played and like I said we did have some first team regulars and it was one of them, our best striker Daniel Sturridge who gets the goal and I was really really pleased to go in front here so Sturridge gets the goal and it's 1-0 to Spurs away at Upton Park and from kickoff here you see West Ham play the ball backwards and uh, they give the ball straight away eventually as uh, Turgut goes down the left hand side but beats Gareth Bale uh, he keeps on to his left foot here he doesn't give the ball away actually he keeps on going down the left hand side I thought that was a clip never mind he goes down the left hand side keeps on going swings in across and uh, the header is uh, blocked and then uh, the follow up header is well saved by Darlow and it's still 1-0 so uh, still in the lead in this game and a uh, good stop by Darlow I was thinking of the wrong clip, sorry about that. It's a good stop by Darlow and still 1 0. But in the 34th minute, West Ham would actually get their equalising goal because the ball was played out wide. Christian Sevelos rolls it forward towards Ricardo Vazte. He plays the ball in field and Lee puts it into the bottom corner. No chance for Darlow with this one. And the home side take the equalising goal and it is West Ham 1, Spurs 1. So good finish into the bottom corner there. But just a few minutes after that, you see Samari get on the ball for us. Chip it over the top towards Gareth Bale. Bale finds Robinson. Robinson plays it back towards Gareth Bale. The Welshman down the uh, right hand side gets past uh, one with the Ronaldo chop, lends a heel to heel flick, and a great finish into the back of the net. So Bale gets the goal there. It's always nice to see Gareth Bale get a goal, and it is West Ham 1, Spurs 2. So when we signed him, you know, he was just about to tick over to 30. He did just over, uh, just, did just tick over to 30, sorry, when we signed him. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, have we overspent £32.5 million pound plus Cooley Barley? But to be honest, I'm very, very pleased we did pick up Gareth Bale. He scored so many goals this year. Got to a bit of a slow start, yes, but since then he scored so many goals. He's been brilliant, and that's another good goal there to make it 2-1. And in the 67th minute here, we almost made it 3-1. Sorry, we did make it 3-1. Uh, Nelson Oliveira got the goal and uh, that made it 3-1 so a very good finish and um, yeah I was very very pleased with that goal as well because Nelson Oliveira hasn't scored in quite a while and uh, of course he is a transfer that may be out of the club uh, come the uh, end of January transfer window but uh, even so really really good finish and I was glad that he did get a goal there and he also won us a penalty in the 69th minute so Nelson Oliveira turned up in this game he doesn't usually play uh, too many games in a row but uh, he's actually got into the team quite a bit of recent uh, of late and uh, that was a really really nice goal by uh, Nelson Oliveira and a good uh, good decision to win the penalty there as he went to the left of Adrian and uh, the Spanish cube brought him, from, uh, brought him down from behind and uh, from that we also made a triple substitution win Okjikpa and uh, I think it might have been Lamella came on uh, yeah it was those three players that came on so uh, winning Okjikpa uh, getting a game plus Lamella and uh, of course Okjikpa or Boris I like to call him because I can't pronounce his surname I'm sure you guys are going to tell me I'm wrong with his surname uh, Boris comes on and uh, for some reason Boris should actually go ahead and take the penalty I didn't think I had it set to him to take it but uh, Boris who just came off the uh, bench is going to take the penalty so the scout future star has the chance to score his first goal for the club here from the spot and it's Boris who stands up and takes it and he does score and what a goal it was as well because he must have hit it with so much shot power the goalkeeper Adrian fell to the floor he put it straight down the middle Adrian stood still and as the ball sailed over his head he fell into the back of his own net so Boris gets the goal and uh, yeah, as you can see on the replay, absolutely ridiculous. Adrian, all he's got to do is jump up and let the ball hit him in the face or even just put one of his arms up and it's a simple save. But instead he falls to the floor and uh, then the floodlights went out and Park. But uh, yeah, <laughs> Boris gets the goal and uh, that made it 4-1. And we did go ahead and collect the uh, win and make our way into the next round of the FA Cup. So that's fantastic news. Like I said, I'm not going to be taking this competition for granted this year. Every single time we have the FA Cup, I usually put our 
our backup side. But this year, we are going to be picking out, uh, picking up strong, uh, sorry, picking strong players for the squad because we do need to make sure we can get ourselves uh, into the next round and next round and next round. Eventually, hopefully, get to the final and win it. And um, yeah, I was very pleased to win that game by four goals to one. After that, we saw that Nelson Oliveira is not going to Manchester United because they will not match the uh, bid I asked for. And also our scout update, yeah, the scout gives us nothing good. And also we got another transfer on for Nelson Oliveira. Again, it's nine and a half million pounds. And again, I say that's not good enough. I asked Real Madrid for thirteen and a half million pounds this time. Uh, sorry, fourteen and a half million pounds, just like the United deal. If they don't match it, then they're not taking them. But uh, after that, we had a game against Manchester City here in the Barclays Premier League and we took them on very recently at White Hart Lane and we won the game by two goals to one and I said in that game I'm not really sure if City are going to be a title rival this year because as you'll see by the league table they haven't really been doing too well they're more of a top four side than a title rival so we take them on and we would be considered favourites but of course we are away from home and that does mean that the uh, the home side are going to be uh, very very dangerous because of course City do have a fantastic home record but we take them on here and uh, we are of course sitting top of the table by a single point so we want to keep on going we want to uh, remain at top of the table we take on Manchester City and uh, the first chance of this game would fall in the 10th minute here as uh, City go down the left hand side but as Sinclair loses out to Gareth Bale here Bale goes down the right hand side really good chance Bale crosses the ball in and Daniel Sturridge makes it 1-0 so just 11 minutes in we take the lead here and it's Sturridge who gets the goal really really good work from Bale Sinclair didn't have a very good game at White Hart Lane he didn't get off to a very good start here he was at fault for that goal Bale robbed him, across the ball in, Sturridge makes it 1-0 and in the 45th minute once again City give the ball away, we go on the break Barkley finds Daniel Sturridge and how about this for a finish by Daniel Sturridge absolutely incredible and this is like the third episode in a row where we have seen a player score an absolute belter from outside the area and uh, the, f the first one was Carrasco, the second one was Barkley, this one it's Daniel Sturridge, I can't decide which finish has been better, this is a brilliant strike by Sturridge from just outside the area yeah it's not you know it's not like a long range screamer if you will but he's just outside the area it's a first time strike and that is just inch perfect isn't it absolutely incredible what a strike by Sturridge and that went ahead and made it uh, Manchester City nil Spurs 2 and any chance of City coming back into this game looked pretty much all but over in the first half and in the second half here you see City get on the ball but they give it away, Bale beats Jack Rodwell with the Berber spin here gets onto his left foot and uh, plays the ball over the top towards Brian Carrasco uh, Jesus Navas wins the ball but it comes to Daniel Sturridge, he's already got two, he finds Brian Carrasco, Carrasco fake shots past Michael Richards, crosses the ball in and it's a header that finds the back of the net Ross Barkley gets the goal, he ended up getting injured as well so he gets the goal which he'll be very pleased about but he picks up a knock on Unfortunately, and uh, Barkley didn't know too much about that goal, but even so, it is uh, City nil Spurs free. Their only chance of the game for City would come when I gave the ball away and Sinclair's shot went wide at the post. That was their only chance of the game, and to be honest, those four chances were the only chance of the game. It was a really, really poor game at the Etihad, yet we still won the game by three goals to nil. So, very pleased to uh, embarrass City at the Etihad, but uh, like I said, I, I was so surprised it was so easy because every single shot we took went into the back the net and uh, City were very very unthreatening so a 3-0 victory and uh, like I said as things stand we are surely going to be touch wood on our way to the title because we are just performing so well. Uh, after that we saw that Real Madrid will not match the £14.5 million deal we asked for for Nelson Oliveira and Barkley did get injured in uh, in the process of scoring in that game he's going to be out for three weeks. We then got two transfer offers once again one for Nelson Oliveira, one for Carroll which we rejected because we're not letting Tom Carroll leave the club and uh, one for Nelson Oliveira Juventus wanted for £9 million they, all the clubs that want Nelson Oliveira they just don't want to seem to go higher than 9 or £9.5 million pounds. I don't know why that is but uh, no club seems to want Nelson Oliveira for what I'm asking for I asked for £13 million pounds. Juventus say no and I don't really care to be honest Like if they're not going to match that amount of money uh, you know, in order for us to buy a new striker then I, I'll, I'll just keep him at the club because even if he's unhappy he's still good enough as an 83 rated striker so you know, it, it doesn't really bother me. But uh, anyway, we offer uh, a new transfer here for Nasa Plee, the French holding midfielder of Sunderland. He's 19 years old, and again, it's just... 
it's just a show. As we sign this guy for one point five million pounds, I'm doing I'm doing this for no other reason than just to show you guys that new gens and regens this year suck. They absolutely suck because they just don't look good at all. This guy is seventy one overall, uh, nineteen years old, six foot four, low and high work rates as a CDM. This guy actually looks okay. He looks like he could go on to be an okay player, but. I, these are the best players in the country and they're distinctly average and I hate that but uh, even so he signed him for one and a half million pounds he'll play like two games you know and that's it but um Unfortunately, EA don't seem to believe in the loan system this year, and um, I can't seem to loan out my youngsters. But uh, to be honest, I'm just really doing this just just for no other reason than to show you that new gens and regens suck this year. But uh, anyway, in this game, we take on Liverpool at Anfield, and this is a title clash here. They are four points behind us here as we sit top of the table and they're in second place. I think if any team is going to catch up, uh, catch us, it's going to be Liverpool. But they've got to win this game. They really do. We're four points clear. If we win this game, there's no way back for Liverpool and they had a great uh, we had a great chance to score just in the 10th minute here as Sturridge goes through but he gets taken down and I could not believe it Sturridge against one of his former clubs should have got a penalty there he Ronaldo chopped past his man but the referee didn't give a penalty and that was a stone wall penalty I was absolutely furious Brendan Rodgers was telling me to calm down and in the 24th minute I went from being furious to absolutely livid because Liverpool went ahead and scored so Liverpool take the lead here I think it was Suzo who got the goal and I was absolutely livid on the touchline because we should have had a penalty there for Sturridge. Instead, Liverpool go up the other end and score and take the lead, so I could not believe it. It's Liverpool 1, Spurs 0, and like I said, it was a game they needed to win, and they were in front. They almost made it 2-0 in the 42nd minute, but thankfully they could only hit the post, and we were still only a goal behind. But in the second half, we came out of the traps flying. I really wanted to get ourselves back on level terms as soon as possible. And as Lamella flew down the left wing here with all this pace, he crosses the ball in. Draxler goes for the header. It's saved by Sirigu, but it is turned in at the far post by Christian Eriksen. Eriksen gets the goal, and it's Liverpool 1, Spurs 1. So we're back on level terms. Liverpool couldn't afford to lose this game. We didn't want to lose. We didn't want to see the gap re uh, reduced to one point. And uh, thankfully for us, Eriksen did score the equalising goal, and it is 1-1 here. But in the 84th minute, Yes, Seal gets on the ball for Liverpool, crosses the ball in, and Gaetan at the far post heads it into the back of the net. Courtois rooted to the spot. It's Liverpool 2, Spurs 1, and unfortunately Anfield is rocking. It was a game they really did need to win, and they were back in front. Gaetan with the goal, and it's 2-1. But as the game was being closed out in the 90th minute here, it was still 2-1. It looked as though Liverpool were going to record a much-needed win, but as Gareth Bale goes down the right-hand side, he outpaces Hillary, and he beats the Portuguese centre-half with the Berber spin. He Curls it into the back of the net. And for the third time this season, I'm going to be saying it again. For the third time this season, we've been bailed out. Gareth Bale gets the goal again in injury time. And it's Liverpool 2, Spurs 2. So Liverpool needed that win. We needed to make sure we wouldn't lose. But we do get ourselves an injury time equaliser. The game finishes 2-2 in a massive game at Anfield. And I was so glad that Gareth did decide to bail us out once again. As always, guys, big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.